the King's Birthday Honours list for 2024 has been revealed. The list recognises the achievements and service of people right across the UK from all walks of life. And we are now speaking to the CEO and founder of Awards Intelligence, Mark Llewellyn Slade, who can give us a breakdown of this year's honours. Hello, Mark. Hi, Joe. Good evening. Hello. Right. Top line then. Go on. Um, well, Alan Bates, the post office campaigner, and uh, how about financier Bill Browder? They've both been knighted. Bill is a human rights and anti-corruption campaigner. He's overcome death threats, kidnap plots, every type of intimidation, really, to campaign relentlessly for something called the Magnitsky Act, not just in one country, but worldwide. The Act is basically the most rigorous piece of legislation to freeze the overseas assets of corrupt officials and leaders and ban them from travelling to those countries. He's been named, believe it or not, by President Putin as his number one foreign enemy. Oh so gosh. there you go. Wow. And, oh, yeah, and when it comes to the honours, we tend to focus on the big names um, and the celebrities like Gordon Brown and Simon Le Bon, another two that have been honoured this evening. But the majority of recipients are what I'd call extraordinary, ordinary people doing great community or charity work, as well as outstanding philanthropists and leaders in their field like entrepreneurs, doctors, business leaders, academics, um, all sorts of different people, really. In fact, any worthy person based anywhere in the world who meets the criteria. And it's always interesting because we, the public, then find out about people that we very seldom hear about that have all been working endlessly um, and, and deserve these awards. <laughs> so in that, you know, on that level, it is really interesting. But sitting here behind a microphone in a BBC studio, I am eager to know the showbiz <laughs> awards and who've, who's earned, you know, a dame, who's become a dame um, from... On the list of candidates. So is it true, Imelda Staunton? Yeah, and you've got the likes of uh, fashion designer Anya Hindmarsh. Um, also, she's got an award this evening. Simon Le Bon, Duran Duran frontman, as I mentioned. Uh, you've got former cyclist Chris Boardman, uh, former Liverpool midfielder Graham Souness. Both of them got uh, CBEs. So I just, I just going to butt in though. I just, Mark, just it's very interesting. Imelda Staunton getting a King's Honour because it's almost like endorsing her role in the Crown, which we're all led to believe. You know, are the royal family actually very happy with way they're being portrayed? trade and yet she's been made a dame well the million dollar question as always when it comes to the honors is have these people gone above and beyond the call of duty because people don't get honors for simply doing their job or at least they shouldn't mm. but you have to be in it to win it actually and when it comes to extraordinary ordinary people the backbone of the honor system they can't nominate themselves so if you know someone who you feel is worthy, put them forward. You can nominate friends, family members, business and community contacts. contacts. But if, if your listeners are not sure if someone's worthy, then contact us here at Awards Intelligence and we'll give them a free, honest assessment of their chances. Because, you know, the benefits are immense of getting an honour. Are, are they? Yeah. Are they? Are they? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It will raise your profile. It will further enhance your reputation. And, of course, it will instill trust, that vital ingredient for success in all walks of life. Very few awards carry the same gravitas and are globally recognised and respected like a royal honour. And the Susie Dent of Countdown, I mean, that's that's quite surprising, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, well, you know, the honour system always throws up a few surprises at the end of the day, and it is all quite subjective too. Um, so, you know, there are going to be talking points uh, at this time of year, year in, year out. Um, you know, the government said a while back that they particularly want to highlight and reward uh, what they call their big five priorities. And those are people who boost the economy through entrepreneurial and business achievement, uh, those that support young people in achieving their potential, and those that aid social mobility, um, oh, community workers, of course, the backbone, um, and those that tackle discrimination. So 
while we do, as I mentioned before, tend to focus on the celebrities and the big names, it is about the extraordinary, ordinary people. And I would really urge your listeners to put pen to paper uh, and get them nominated because no one's going to know about Bert in Bristol and Mavis in Macclesfield doing great work for the WI or running the under-12 soccer team for 20 years if no one bothers to tell the government. Very true. Uh, can I just ask, Mark, I remember the year when I think the Times, or I think it was a, I think it was a time, a broadsheet anyway, that printed all the people that they could get hold of who turned down the awards. I mean, how many do? How many that we never hear of? Oh, well, you always get a few. I mean, it, it's a real minority, and they turn them down for a number of reasons, sometimes because they don't believe in the honour system or they just don't like the current government of the day, or, um, and this happens quite often, because they've been offered an honour that they feel is too low and they're mm. worthy of a higher one. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because there are people who have turned down lower honours and a year or two later accepted a high one. Yeah, and want a knighthood. <laughs> yeah, his, yeah. That's his yeah. Listen, it's lovely to speak to you. Thank you so much for coming on and giving us that breaking news. Um, and the full honours list is obviously there if you want to Google it. And we were speaking there to Mark Llewellyn Slade. And